Hello everyone, my name is Simon Lavender. This is Amass Games and today I'm showing you a video on how to set up, play and review Backgammon. Now, like with the checkers example, or the drafts examples, you'll notice that unfortunately some pieces have been missing. This has been filmed during the COVID-19 lockdown and I think there's enough pieces on the board to show you basically what you need to be doing. So you set your pieces up so that they're symmetrical from each other. So the red men, or the red players, dark players, black, brown, whatever you want to call them, the ones which aren't white are placed like there. Two, that is known as your home board. And the race is going to be on to try and get all your pieces from this end being red to here. And for white is going to be getting from here all the way around to here. I'll show you how that works in a moment. But you set the game up, five pieces here, two of the opponents, three pieces here of your opponents, three of yours. Five, five, two, and two. So just mirror that, and that's what you need to worry about. You then roll, so you start, red, red rolls that, and uh, white rolls the same. So let's just do them again, to get anything different. So I think it was red to start. So red is trying to get from here, all the way around to here. So what it now does is it picks up its dice and it rolls. The aim of the game is to get all your pieces into your home board, and once they're there, they're allowed to be taken off the board once you've rolled the relevant number. So it's got a five and a three. So what it could do is move. Now some boards aren't like this where you have two different colors, but in this case, it's very handy. Can you can easily count how far to go? And you can go one, two, three, four, five. So you can move that piece there. When a piece has got at least two of your own pieces on it, or their opponents have got their own pieces on it, it's now blocked. The opponent cannot land there. Now the three could be one, two, three. Now the downside with doing something like that is it's exposed, it's actually exposed two pieces. So then what happens is the other opponent's turn and they roll two or six or whatever. Just imagine they roll something relevant to knock this piece off. What happens is firstly it can move one, two, three, four, five, six. It can't roll six because it's blocked. So it'd have to roll like a two and then something else would be a six. But imagine what it did was it somehow landed. In fact, that would be a six all the way down here. This comes off and this would normally go on a different kind of board, like a wooden board on the hinge. This is known as the bar. Now, when it's uh, red stone, which it is now, it now has to come back on here. It starts in its um, original space, so not in where it's trying to get to. It starts down here and it can either go two or five and then it has to do the, the five somewhere else. It's probably best to do that two and five because it goes one, two, three, four, five. And now it's safe. So that piece is safe. But if your piece is exposed, you're going to have to reset. So you're trying to bunch your pieces together. As I said, you roll the dice on the independent. If you get the same result, say a three and a three, what you can be doing is moving this piece, one, two, three, this piece, one, two, three, and repeats. So basically, you get to double it. If you get a double, you double it again. So it allows you to move more pieces around quickly. It's a very good thing to have. This game, in terms of luck, is about four out of five. In terms of strategy, um, I think it's ranked about two out of five. And um, in terms of complexity, about one out of five. So that's doubles explained. Now, if you can't go, then you can't go. For example, what could happen is you've got your pieces here and suddenly now red has blocked up loads of these spaces. And you happen to roll, so white rolls, uh, let's say it, they rolled uh, a one and a two or three threes, or sorry, obviously two threes. Then they've wasted all of that because they're, and they're on the bar, they got knocked off and now they can't get back out. So imagine, yeah, that happened. Then white has to go on the bar, then it's turn, it must move this piece off first, and it resets to come round. If you have all your pieces now over here, as I've mentioned earlier, so suddenly red's pieces are all over here, and it could be wherever you want to stick them, maybe what's moved it off. You've done that, you simply roll, and so this piece can come off the six, and anything obviously two or one that can come off two. Now, if you take all your pieces off and uh, you do that before your opponent, you win. If you do it and your opponent hasn't taken anything off, that's called a gammon, if they're all in its, their own space uh, in this section. And finally, if you do it, so it's worth two times the amount of normal points in a victory. And finally, if you happen to do it whereby your piece, whereby the opponent's piece is still on the bar or starts to come into play, then that's called a backgammon and it's worth triple points. So backgammon, when I played it years ago, I kind of gave it a 6 out of 10. It was interesting, and blocking is very important. Making sure you have doubles is very important. Blocking um, the home board so it reduces spaces to come out for your opponent is very important too. 
And my ranking during COVID-19, playing online in terms of my belief in what I thought the game was worth as a game, it became sort of 9 out of 10. Uh, it's since dropped back down to a 6, I guess, because of that luck. Strong players can lose to weak players. And um, yeah, especially online, everyone said, oh, there's too many doubles occurring. But uh, this is a game that I think, if you haven't played, this is a very old game. This is from uh, about 3,000 years BC, so or however you wish to call it these days. So it's about 5,000 years old. It's one of the oldest games around, and the ones that are still played today in particular, and um, in this sort of modern era. And I've seen people who I've worked with who are from Turkey and is playing there, and had loads of people, loads of like, old men in particular, watching it all, and became very fascinated. So this is just an overview. If you think I've made any mistakes or something, check the descriptions in case I've had to re-clarify something. I, I'm only hearing my voice, so if I want to hear yours, uh, please put something in the comments as well. And if you are keen to see any videos first, obviously this is in the abstract kind of section of games, but there are lots of other types of games I'm bringing out and also reviewing, then please do hit the subscribe button to see them first. There's lots of games coming from Spain, uh, UK, Germany, Poland, America, and there's one other country I can't name right now, I can't remember. But they're all coming, and I'll be looking forward to bringing them soon. And I'm seeing triple figures now of likes, so every month I'm getting lots of likes, so if you like this one, please do the same as well. And yeah, hopefully you found a bit of interest, especially for an older game. You might recognise this, you might have seen it on the back of a, a chess set, I always wondered what it was. Ultimately, you're starting one corner and going round, or they're starting here. You're starting two pieces already in the area you want to get out. And then finally, you're going to have your pieces to ready to kind of attack to take them. And it's a very much a, a cat and mouse thing. Do you want to go on the offensive or do you play defense? And you watch out for any kind of loose positions. It's all about the die rolls. It's obviously just a single die for each movement. So there's no probability to worry about. It's just something that you want to be considering. So I hope you found that enjoyable and I look forward to bringing you another video very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.